Welcome everybody to today's webinar featuring Serious Decisions Analyst Craig Moore. Um, my name is James Thomas and today we're talking about Tactical to Transformational, the Evolution of Marketing Operations. Today's webinar, as I mentioned, is, uh, is joined by Craig Moore and Craig, Craig helps senior B2B marketing executives implement processes, technology, strategy into their marketing operations. Uh, his main focus is on aligning marketing, product and sales. Uh, serious decisions and Craig's help uh, help CMOs be more strategic um, with marketing operation leaders, driving strategy and processes into marketing organizations. Craig also leads Serious Decisions Marketing Operations Strategy Service and is focused on helping marketing organizations implement the Serious Decisions Campaign Framework. So we're really happy to have Craig with us today. Our agenda for the, the section is to talk about the evolving role of marketing operations, thinking about strategy, infrastructure, enablement, accountability. So thinking about how marketing needs to, marketing operations need to align to the marketing organization uh, to become more strategic in, in their company by providing insight uh, in, into what's going on in the business, to providing systems and processes that helps them be more efficient, and ultimately giving visibility into senior executives and managers to understand how well marketing is actually performing. <clears throat> Today we're going to get fairly deep into this strategy alignment section about how um, marketing needs to be looking at strategy and their investments and how they're aligning business goals and revenue performance. Then I'm going to jump back in and talk about financial planning and how uh, we can take these perspectives and provide the, the baseline for um, actually measuring and monitoring your marketing uh, performance. Just a reminder, we will be taking questions uh, in the webinar, and so if you want to use the question and chat panel, we'll be able to uh, jump in throughout the webinar. Uh, if you have any technical difficulties, feel free to contact us directly. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Craig to jump into uh, what he wants to talk about, which is really about how marketing can transform from being tactical to transformational. So over to you, Craig. Thank you, James. So today's presentation is going to focus on how we at Serious Decisions see marketing operations evolving. So we'll look at how we see the organization changing from what it was doing in the very beginning of the, of the inception of marketing operations and where it's focusing today. And then we'll look at some of the uh, things that marketing operations professionals are doing today to help optimize their business performance. So one of the questions we're often asked is how we define marketing operations. And you know, using the term operations, often we find that operations can mean many things to many people. Well, at Serious Decisions, we've developed a, a relatively narrow definition of what we see marketing operations to be. And it's really focused in four major categories. And these categories are, one, is focusing on the accountability of marketing as a whole. So what is marketing done, how did it perform, and how did it align with expectations? The second area is that marketing operations is very focused on infrastructure. So this is the technology infrastructure and the data infrastructure that makes marketing operate. The third area, and this is an emerging area, is around enablement. Part of it is focused on looking at key processes that operate in the marketing organization and helping optimize them. And another part of enablement is making sure that the right people are in the right jobs that are aligned to the business strategy and the marketing strategy, that's the marketing strategy that's been put in place by the CMO. And then the, the fourth area for marketing operations responsibilities is around planning. This is about helping develop and helping operationalize the marketing plan. So looking at what the CMO wants to accomplish from a strategic view and operationalizing that. And this part of this is understanding what the campaign strategy needs to be, and part of it is about understanding what the budget strategy needs to be. And so this is a more detailed view of how we define marketing operations. And, and we look at marketing operations in different organizations on, an, on a maturity level. We see that some organizations have a, a nascent marketing operations function, and often when we see these emerging marketing operations functions, they tend to be very tactical. They tend to be focused on looking at the measurement of specific tactics or looking at um, historical reporting exclusively, so what happened, and trying to explain uh, why things happened the way they did. 
looking across these four pillars, you can see that we have broken them down to measurement, so historical reporting and trying to enable the organization to be able to do something with that information. And as it moves from tactical to strategic, it's, it's trying to take historical reporting and, and really roll it up to the point where you can judge how the marketing organization has impacted the overall business performance. Analytics, it tends to be historical, and then it begins to evolve. We see it evolve into what we'll call exploratory analytics, where you can begin to do what-if kind of modeling and then into more predictive analytics, so you can begin to show it what you might expect to happen based on certain assumptions coming true. So analytics is evolving, and it becomes more strategic as we, as we see marketing operations organizations evolve. In the area of infrastructure, we see data as an, a specific area of focus. Starts with the administration of data and the management of lists, and then evolves into you know, more around master data management, coordinating with the IT organization and making sure that all the data that's required to do certain marketing activities and to do the analysis on those uh, marketing activities is in place. From a technology perspective, in the beginning, it's really about helping acquire some of the technology and administering it, and then it begins to evolve to managing the technology infrastructure that's in place for the marketing organization. And we see very mature marketing operations organizations looking at the, the technology that's in place, assessing it, and then uh, putting a roadmap in place for a technology that needs to be acquired over time and, and used more effectively. From an enablement perspective, at the tactical level, we see a focus on just managing individual processes, and you know, generally that's the lead management process, and it begins to evolve uh, as, as marketing ops organizations become more mature into trying to optimize some of these processes. And then sometimes when new processes are put in place, then it's marketing operations that can step up and help with some of the change management functions. Now an emerging area of enablement for marketing operations is around skills. And in the beginning, it's really about training. It's training people on how to use the technology often is what we see there. But then as marketing operations and marketing organizations evolve, this, this enablement area becomes more about understanding what the skills and, and competencies are, are that are required for the organization and then helping the CMO get the right people in the right jobs. And so sometimes that involves organization design, workforce planning, and trying to identify where competencies can be rounded out and expanded where needed. And then in the area of planning, we see it in two areas, uh, budget, and budget usually starts at trying to manage the process of, of spending, just really looking at opening POs and trying to manage all the uh, tactics associated with that. But then it begins to evolve into a point where you've got good, effective tracking, and you're making sure that you're spending all the money that's in your budget, because if you don't spend it, it you know, it's, it's a waste to marketing. It goes somewhere, probably goes back to finance if you don't spend it. And so doing a good job of making sure that you're consuming the budget and making sure that it's focused on the right kind of activities, all the way up to a more strategic perspective of making sure that the budget plan is aligned to the, the go-to-market plan and aligned with campaign plans. And so that the budget planning function and the campaign planning functions often evolve in parallel. So this is the serious decisions view of what marketing operations is all about. It's really got the potential for being quite strategic. There's a lot of business management involved in here, and there's a lot of technology in here, understanding of processes, and it's really uh, an emerging and a exciting area of, of work for marketers that have a process-centric view of, of work. So one of the things we've done at Serious Decisions has developed a, a marketing operations maturity model. And this is something that helps organizations look at where they are. And by being able to score yourself in these different categories, and we've sort of abbreviated them here, you know, looking at how you define marketing operations, who marketing operations interlocks with, who, the, who, who are the other organizations that it aligns with, how it manages different processes, looking at its capacity for managing enablement, skills, knowledge, and training managing technology and tools and doing measurement and reporting. Judging how the organization, how effective it is in each of these categories and by scoring it and using this model, what then can happen is you can look at the areas where you have particular strengths and particular weaknesses and begin to figure out what it is you're going to do next. So it's a really good tool for understanding where you are and then being able to identify the specific actions that you need to take to move to the next level. And not all marketing operations organizations need to try to strive for level five here. So part of the marketing operations maturity model is to understand where you need to be in this model and then 
putting steps in place to get to the to where you need to be. And one of the things that we've observed as we see marketing operations organizations grow is that they evolve through different functions. When we see marketing operations first come in to place into an organization. You know, we see them at sort of a nascent maturity, so level one here. They tend to be focused on reporting, and generally that reporting is historical reporting. And they also tend to be focused on technology. And one comment on the technology here is that this is an area that's changing quickly. Two or three years ago, when we looked at the allocation of resources in marketing operations, we found that reporting was the sole foundation, the sole cornerstone of marketing operations and technology really sort of came into play at level two or maybe level three of maturity. But today we see many, many small companies build their first marketing operations organization and they're immediately invested in technology and they're using technology to leverage the marketing function in ways they just weren't doing a couple years ago. So it's an area that's changing very quickly. So you can see at level one maturity, it's reporting and technology, but then as maturity expands, you see that almost immediately there's a focus on trying to manage budget. And generally at level two maturity, it's focus on the operations of the budget, trying to make sure that the spending is consistent and you're staying within budget and you're not wasting money and you're using all the money that's being allocated to you and so forth. So these are more about budget operations. We also see some attention being paid to looking at some of the processes and trying to optimize them or as organizations grow and are moving into different geographies, we find that you know, perhaps there's a process that works well in, in North America and they want to replicate that in Europe. So we see some of that syndication of processes taking place. And then as you move into higher levels of maturity, you begin to see all these different areas get covered. And one thing that's interesting is at about level three of marketing operations maturity is where we see advanced analytics begin to emerge. And I've kind of dimmed the dot here because, you know, this is a really interesting transition point for the use of analytics. One of the things that's happening is as you go into the use of advanced analytics in an organization, you're trying to help drive business change. You're trying to try you're trying to drive the way business decisions are made through the use of insights that you can gather from your analytics efforts. And often that's a cultural change. It's a it's a corporate culture change to become a data-driven decision-making organization. And so we see that at this level three of maturity, there's an it's not about the technology, it's not about the data, it's not about the tools that you have, it's often about getting people to think a little bit differently and to accept the fact that data-driven insights can help drive their decision making. And so we've got it dimmed a little bit here because it's, this is a challenging transition for organizations to really begin to leverage analytics as they become more and more mature in their marketing operations function. So what I'd like to do now is to think about some of the considerations that are important to help the marketing organization align to its business objectives more effectively. So I'll share with you some, some tools and some models that you can use to help, from a marketing operations perspective, help make sure that the marketing strategy and your budgetary investments in marketing are better aligned to your business goals. And ultimately, that's going to help you drive revenue performance. And the first tool and the first framework we have to support this is the Serious Decisions Campaign Framework. There's five elements to this framework. And the first is that a campaign is based on a buyer's need. So what we're, focus, what we're saying is you need to focus your go-to-market efforts, your campaign efforts, on the fundamental business needs of the buyer, not on your product, not on your technology. The second is that the campaign is built of these four program families. So you begin to think of your go-to-market efforts not just as demand creation, but as a combination of reputation-based activities where this is thought leadership, image, awareness, demand creation. Well, so this is where sourcing and nurturing of demand takes place, but also sales enablement. So making sure that your campaign themes are aligned within the sales function, and so you're giving the sales organization the assets and the tools and the insights they need to be able to tell the, the customer needs-based theme as they interact with the customer throughout their buyer's journey, and that that's aligned with what you're doing from a demand creation and a reputation perspective. And then finally, the fourth program family in the campaign framework is market intelligence. And since uh, we believe that these campaigns should run for a long period of time, um, market intelligence is an area where you can make some substantial investments in understanding um, whether you've got the right 
correct articulation of buyers' needs so your messaging is consistent and is resonating with your buyers, to understand how your competitors are responding to your campaign activities, and sometimes to even understand how your own organization is using your campaign assets, so more introspective primary research to understand how your own organization is using it. So the tactics you're probably familiar with as marketers, so they fall into these program families in these ways. So things like your thought leadership blog fall into the reputation area, white papers, the webcasts, those are demand creation activities and they fall into the demand creation program family. Uh, sales enablement, ROI tools, configuration guides, services, insights, planning tools like that, they fall into sales enablement. And then market intelligence, doing so your primary research and assessing your competitive environment. So other elements of the campaign framework is that we do see that it runs for a long period of time. We say at least a year. Sometimes when customers get really focused on building out their campaigns, they'll see that a year is not long enough. It could be two, it could be three years. We see that the work that's done within the campaign framework really consists of either creating demand, nurturing demand, enabling the sales force, accelerating deals in the pipeline, or what you're doing from a reputation perspective is, is seeding demand. So there's really only five job types that are in there, and that's one of the characteristics of the campaign framework. And finally, to make it all fit together, there's, there's this element of collaboration that's really required to make campaigns work. And that's about collaborating with sales, collaborating with all different functions of marketing, and collaborating with your product organization to make it all work together. And one of the things that we like to do as we work with companies that are implementing campaigns is to have them think about their campaign objectives. And this is where your investments in your campaign really come into play. So you've got a budget. You want to invest it in your campaigns. And one of the first questions you have to ask is as you define the campaign, so we're now past the what's the buyer's need we're trying to address. And now what we're looking at is what we're trying to accomplish with this campaign. So the first thing we want to do is look at where your revenue is coming from. So hypothetically, you might be looking at trying to drive a portion of your revenue from new logos. So this is selling to brand new accounts. You might also have a portion of your revenue come from existing customers, and some of that might just be retaining customers, getting them to renew the contracts they already have in place. And then you might also be upselling your existing customers. You might be cross-selling your existing customers. So one of the jobs you have to do here is to understand where your revenue is coming from in each of these four boxes and then understand what sort of marketing investment you want to make in each of these four boxes. You might find that only 20% of your revenue is going to come from new logos, but because you have to go create new customers, that's going to take a substantial investment from your marketing perspective, so you might put 50% of your marketing budget in that particular box. And then retention, retention doesn't usually cost as much as finding new customers, so you might be generating 50% of your revenue just from retention, but that might only require 10 to 20% of your campaign investment. So a process of going through that sort of analysis and understanding where the revenue is coming from and where your marketing investment is going is a really foundational component of understanding how you want to invest in your campaigns overall. And to support that, we've got a strategic allocation model for budgeting. And so here's your budget plan, your overall budget allocation at the top. And the first thing that you want to do is to begin to think about what's headcount related and what's program related. So what is that you've got that's a discretionary spend? And then in the program category, what's outside of the campaign effort? So what are your shared services that you have to fund, all the overhead marketing activities you have to do? Is there an annual event that you need to run? And it doesn't make sense to allocate the annual event to each of your campaigns. You're just going to hold that as an overhead function. You know you're going to do it, so you just go ahead and allocate for it. What that leaves is the money that you have to spend on your different campaigns. And if you've gone through all your different campaigns and you've gone through this process of filling in those four boxes we just looked at, so you know where your revenue is coming from on a per campaign basis, and then you know where your revenue is coming from within each campaign, then you can begin to allocate the dollars across the different campaigns. So in this example, we're showing that you've got four campaigns. One's going to get 40% of the investment, another 30, and the remaining two are going to get 15%. And then within each of those campaigns, you want to do the same kind of allocation and figure out what you want to spend on reputation, how much on demand creation, how much on sales enablement, how much on market intelligence. You might even segment that by industries. Maybe you've got a horizontal play in there. And so this begins to help you allocate from an allocation top-down approach, begin to focus where you're going to spend your money. It's a very powerful tool because you know, even with the biggest of numbers at that top there, as you begin to break it down with these categories, those numbers get pretty small pretty fast, and as they begin to get smaller, then you can begin to do some bottoms-up planning and think about how you want to pay for your different tactics. 
And this is where that top down and bottom up meet. So here's an example of a campaign. You've, you know how much of your money you're spending on a the campaign, then you've begun to think about what you want to do with the new logo, upsell, cross sell, and so that's factored into what you're going to do from a reputation, demand creation, sales enablement, and market intelligence perspective. You think about how that's going to spread out across the quarters. And then the next step is to think about what it means from a, from a field and a, and, a, and a global perspective. And we identify four categories that really help break this out. We think of it from a global development perspective. So what are you going to do in your campaigns that's going to be created, developed, that's going to be used worldwide? So these could be white papers. It could be your web site, your, some of your website activities. What are you going to do to execute? So what kind of funding do you have to do to actually run the tactics that are going to benefit every everyone across the company, across the country or all countries you're serving? So there's a global execution. And then you can begin to think about what you need to do to execute at a regional level. And then you can see I've got dotted lines around regional development. We generally try to minimize what we see developed in regions because what we want are the regions to adopt the campaigns and to run them. Now, it's always the case that something's got to be done that's unique within a region, and so there might be some development work that has to be done there, but it's the kind of thing that you want to manage very carefully because if you don't, then what you end up with was is your regions running their own sort of independent siloed campaigns, and that's what the campaign framework is helping you avoid doing. So I've got those dotted lines around there for a reason, and that's to try to help manage that very carefully. This is a very effective tool, and what this enables is the analysis of your return on investment. If you plan top down and then you're careful about allocating and tagging the funds from a bottom up perspective, you can measure the return that you're getting on your investment in marketing campaigns. So let's think about different ways of allocating the budget because there's lots of different ways to do it and organizations each have their own approach and I'll share with you that Serious Decisions allocates a campaign oriented approach to allocating budgets and you see that that budget allocation model that I just shared with you is really focused on showing you how to allocate money to, to campaigns. And by allocating the money to the campaigns, you're funding the initiative, you're funding the thing that you want to do as opposed to funding the department or funding the geography. But there's lots of other ways of doing it and we recognize that different organizations are going to fund their budgets in different ways. So what I want to share with you here is, is just looking at some different ways of allocating budgets and give you some of the advantages and disadvantages of them so you can think about what that means in, in your environment. So the first approach is a centralized approach and this is where you go to the CMO or you go to the CFO and ask for money for every little thing you want to do. It's kind of a Solomon approach where you go and ask for permission to spend, they grant the permission, they give you the money. And you know the advantage of that is that it certainly ensures control. It's very simple. Uh, but the problem with it is that every independent marketer has to go and ask for money. And when you have to go ask for money, what, what it is, you're sort of operating in a in a vacuum. You don't necessarily see all the other teams that are asking for money and what they're doing. It's not inherently a collaborative process. And the other thing is that, and what this is really interesting outcome of it, is that you can't really get the sense of the scale. You don't know how big you need to think when you're just going and asking for money. You know, you may have a big tactic, you may have a little one, you just don't know what the overall scope ought to be of the things that you're doing because you can't see the big pool of money and how much ought to be yours there. So it's really hard to know whether to think big or not think big. And so that's a real disadvantage of this central model. Now another one is this functional model, and this is probably the most common approach to budgeting. And this is where the budget is divided up between the different departments of marketing. So the communications team gets some, field marketing gets some, product marketing gets some. So what happens? Well, each of these groups get their budget, and then they go build their marketing plans, and then they execute their marketing plans. So the good news is they're building plans, but what's happening is that they're building their plans that operate in silos. So if every department, every function within marketing has got their own budget and they've built their own plans around it, what happens when you want to do something that's going to cut across those different silos, those different groups? Well, you have to tend cup across each of them to develop money to go do something like running a campaign. And, you know, 10 cupping is a tough thing because you go around and you ask for money and kind of get strange behavior sometimes. People might hoard money. They know if they don't give it to you, then, you know, somebody else will give more and, you know, they can have more for themselves. It's, a, it's, a, it's not the best uh, approach to try to build things that are inherently collaborative. So we view the functional model as actually discouraging collaboration. It creates these silos and it's pretty challenging to work with them. Now, another approach is geographic. And what this means is that the money is then allocated to the sales geographies. So you might see that 
you know, the first cut is that money goes to North America, EMEA, and APJ for theirs, and then it gets broken down there. So sometimes you see geographic and then a functional cut. Now, it does get the money closer to sales, so you don't have all the uh, ivory tower marketing stuff running from corporate, and it's not really realistic and aligned with what uh, the salespeople are selling. So that's that's one advantage. You know, you get that sales alignment component of it, and it does tend to focus on execution. And so sometimes we find that the money that's spent in a more of a geographic allocation is a little further in the buyer's journey. So it's more focused on sales enablement than perhaps reputation and demand creation. But it does create these geo silos, and sometimes you see redundancy where the same creatives are, are um, done in different countries within uh, Europe, for example, or different regions within the U.S., so you see there's a lot of redundancy taking place. And it also tends to focus on short-term activities, so you get a lot of, of short-term sales-oriented, deal-driving kinds of marketing activities, and that doesn't encourage some of the longer-term nurturing approaches of marketing that are really important. I mean, marketing's timeline is longer than sales timeline. And so um, this particular budget model does have a disadvantage of, of, of discouraging long-term thinking. Now, the next approach is to, to focus on funding the products. So you look at the different products, the revenue you want to generate, and then you, you put the money towards the products, and then each of these products get their own campaigns. Well, it's, it's, it, the good news is it's less about how you're organized, and it's more about what you're selling not really aligned to buyer's needs because it's really more about your product. So one of the things that we think is really important is that you should be focused on the buyer's need, not on what it is you're trying to sell. So we think this is probably a better approach in many ways to than just you know the centralized functional or geographic, but it doesn't really give you the ability to focus on buyer's needs. It's really just more focused on products and it can become really challenging, especially if you've got lots of products because then you're thinking about running a campaign for each product and that becomes very inefficient. And, uh, you know, think about buyer's needs. Buyers might buy more than one product from you. So what are you going to do? Hit them with two campaigns for two products? I mean, that's not a very efficient way to go. Now, the next evolution of that is to think about solutions. Solutions are a packaging of products that are focused on buyer needs, and this is a really good approach. So this is sort of that next step that's almost towards the campaign area, and, you know, this thinks about blending the products and services and offerings together in a solution that's focused on buyer needs. The one thing that this doesn't really drive is thinking about reputation, demand creation, sales enablement, and market intelligence collectively. So this is a good step in that direction, but if you could just sort of go the next step, which is looking at it from a campaign perspective, then you could begin to focus on buyer's needs, the portfolio of offerings that meet those buyer's needs, and then think about what that means across reputation requirements, demand creation, sales enablement, and market intelligence. So to think about, you know, the different types of perspectives and what's really important about how you want to manage your budget is to understand that everyone in the organization has a point of view and they really ought to be able to look at things from their own point of view. So I showed you all those different allocation model, models and, and they're not, I mean, if you just had one of them and you don't have any of the other, you really kind of do yourself a disservice because it is important to be able to look at things from different perspectives. And the first is that you might want to look at it from the function perspective because you want to look at how well the web team's doing, how much they spent, how much they've done over a period of time so you can begin to look at functional level performance. So actually having the ability to look at where the spend went along a functional line is a good thing to do. You also want to be able to look at it from a sales and geography perspective because salespeople want to understand where marketing is making their investments. They want to look at it from the perspective of their theater or their territories. They also want to look at it from the perspective of their channels. And so it's important to be able to have a view into that budget so that you can see where the money is being spent and begin to think about what that money is generating from these different perspectives. Another one is around the products. So you've got business units. Each of these business units are run by people that are likely managed to a P&L, and so they want to be able to ask the question of what's marketing doing to support their product efforts. And so giving them a slice and a view of what the product or what the marketing organization is doing to support their perspective is really important. So they want to look at it from, from their products or their offering perspective, and they might also want to look at it from their initiatives. Maybe they want to penetrate a particular geography or penetrate a, a, an industry, and they want to be able to see it from that perspective. And so it's really important important that you can have a view that provides that. And then finally, you want to have it from a campaign point of view. And the point of allocations, if you can allocate it to the campaign level, then you can also provide these functional product and sales geography-based views. 
So allocate it to the campaign level and then map it back to all these other functions. But this will give everyone a perspective to do that. So being able to have these views we think is really important and it's a, it's a great way to be able to communicate what marketing is doing to support all the different interests that exist within your organization. So to summarize our view of budgeting, there's really four elements that we view as being essential. And the first is that we believe that a budget needs to be aligned to your business. So that means that you need to understand what your corporate initiatives are, what your sales initiatives are. Your sales initiatives are generally, you know, I've got to generate so much revenue, but perhaps by theater or by geography. They uh, often are looking at revenue by channel, so they know what's going to be sold through direct or indirect channels. And many companies, not all, but many of them are also looking at revenue by offering, by products. And, you know, not all companies are set up that way, but many are, and to the extent that they're set up that way, they need to be able to you need to be able to align your budget to the sales budgets. You also need to align your budget to what the business units are trying to accomplish. So if they're looking at new products coming in, they're looking at growth or um, share goals in different regions or in different industries, and you need to be able to align your investments and budget to the, the goals that these organizations have. So step one is to align it. And then you need to allocate it, and we believe that the best way to allocate the budget is to allocate it to campaigns. As I said, if you allocate it to campaigns, and you can also factor in the theaters and the products and the functions. That's easy to do once you get it to the campaigns. If you get if you just get it to the to the other components, if you just get it to the functions, it's really hard to map it to campaigns. You got to get it to the campaigns and allocate it there. Now, another thing that we believe is really important is we think that budgets should be transparent. We think that understanding where marketing's budget is going and not cloaking it in secrecy but making it visible to all those that have a need to know. Then you can see where the money's going. Everybody has a good sense of what investment is being made by marketing into their area of interest. And that really answers a lot of questions that organizations have. If they can't see it, they don't know what is going into the other kitties and um, they may not feel that there's fairness involved. So it's really important to be able to have transparency in your budgeting process. And then finally, you need to be able to manage it effectively. And marketing operations has a big role in that. And uh, we believe that that top-down allocation and then effective bottom-up management is really critical. And you need to have budget operations system that can give you the ability to manage your budget on a day-to-day -day basis and do things like make sure that you're managing the opening of of POs, you know, through the purchase rec and PO process, that you know where those invoices are. They're coming in. You, as the invoices come in, you can map them to the to the purchase orders. And if there's a dif difference between how much the PO is open for and how much the invoice comes in, then what you can do is make sure that that accrual that comes from that and that that the money that's not spent can be reallocated back into the marketing organization for other purposes. And if you don't have a good system put in place to do that, then often you're leaving money on the table. It's especially the case when you know you open a PO for ten thousand dollars and the invoice comes in at ninety five hundred, there's five hundred dollars sitting somewhere waiting to be spent. And um, if marketing doesn't know that they can go claim that money and reallocate it to something else, the money gets lost. It gets lost to marketing. It's, it's in the company's hands somewhere. But you know, you're not really doing your, your job if you're leaving money on the table and just gets uh, you know, kind of scooped back into the, to the finance kitty for um, other uses uh, because that money was given to marketing to accomplish a job and, and not spending it's a shame. So this is the, the strategic budgeting framework, and we believe that if you use this as the guideline, that you really will have an effective view of how you want to manage your budgets going forward. So at this point, I'd like to turn it over to James, and he can help show how Alcadia can address some of these considerations that I've highlighted today. Thanks, Craig, for the overview of the strategic budgeting framework for marketing. And, and what I want to do now is to talk about how we take a lot of this concepts and strategy and put it into practice uh, with, with Alcadia. And so just a re refresher, if you don't know Alcadia very well, I haven't researched us too much. Alcadia is what we call a marketing performance management system. And by that we mean at the core of Alcadia is a planning and budgeting application. Um, the idea that uh, marketers need to take that corporate strategy and that plans that Craig talked about and put it into a system so that then it can be managed uh, when you're talking about your how much you plan on spending on what activities, how much your return on investment you plan to drive um, to align to the business strategy we just talked about. 
also a, a budgeting application where you can actually replace your budgeting spreadsheets uh, with uh, a cloud-based system that lets you track your targets, your actionals, and do things like scenario planning, saying, what if my budget decreases? What if my budget increases? What if um, I would need to invest more in one of the strategies Craig talked about? We, we surround that by accessing all the different systems needed to drive that, whether it be from finance, whether it be from your Salesforce automation system uh, to track your revenue performance, your invoices, uh, or accessing your other marketing automation systems. So whether that be a, a Marketo or Eloqua, whatever you're using to manage your, um, your marketing programs, we want to connect to that. We want to connect your traditional uh, asset and content management tools, uh, as well as social and web, web analytics. And the result is a, well, really is a system of record for marketing that can look at your, your business in multiple different ways, whether you're looking at funnel metrics, whether it be return on investment, whether it be spend analytics. And so Allocadia at its core, it takes a lot of the strategies uh, that Craig, Craig talked about and puts them into an application that then you can run the business. So let's look just a little deeper. So if you think about the strategic budgeting framework that Craig mentioned earlier, if we start at the top, the idea of being aligned, aligned to corporate initiatives, uh, whether that be uh, sales objectives by geography, by channel, by specific op offer, or business unit growth, share, competitive goals. So these are, co these are conversations where we're not talking about uh, the execution of an event. We're taking it up a level to think, what does the company want to, does the company care about? And if you think about um, uh, in this example where we have our budgets, a North American budget, and I want to sort by objective, my objectives might be uh, by, by category. This is the serious decision framework. Um, but we might want to pull that down and say, I actually want to look a, 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 at this by things like campaign theme, by uh, campaign type, by product offering, by business unit. So you want a multi-dimensional view of all your spend based on how the company wants to look at your, at your, uh, at your objectives. So making sure you align the first thing that marketing can do. If you're going ahead and building uh, and just talking about executing campaigns, you're probably missing the point as you want to speak outside of marketing into your head of sales, your uh, CFO, uh, or, or your CEO who really has a different requirement to look at marketing. So making sure you align to the right people and the right teams in the organization is your first step. So you want to be able to be able to view your, uh, in your budget in, in any, any format. <clears throat> the second one is allocated. So you want to make sure that you can spend the money that you've been uh, assigned to you. And that's what Craig talked about just before we handed it over was talking about making sure that you're, you're, looking at the budget that you have, making sure you understand what you're spending it on, making sure that everybody is, has visibility into, um, into what campaigns are happening and what trade shows are happening and how much, how many leads you expect to generate and how much is being spent. So um, Serious Decisions, we, we did a webinar with uh, Serious last year. It's available on our website to talk about the Serious Decisions campaign framework, making sure you're measure, measuring your business uh, based on uh, how you want to be a consistent view of how you want to be looking at your business. So if you want to go back and refer to that to about the campaign framework, that's clearly one element we want to, um, to look at. Third level is about being transparent. And there's a big belief that uh, many organizations uh, in, in the past, marketing has been this a bit of a black hole for how um, they're really driving the business. And the numbers they would talk about would be things like leads and things like, um, uh, campaign execution, but being transparent is really about uh, sh sharing the information uh, with different departments, whether it be different departments in marketing. So it could be Field Marketing Americas, EMEA, and Asia Pacific. How are you performing across those regions? Uh, you want to be able to look at this by uh, you, thinking about what your executives might want to see, a, a highly visible dashboard that talks not just about leads, but about revenue performance, um, spend analytics, how much I'm spending on spending on different areas. Um, and, and one of the big con forgotten constituents is often finance. And, and marketing and finance um, have long had a, a strained relationship where marketing would go to finance and they get a big bucket of money and then marketing would go and squirrel away that money in a spreadsheet. It just doesn't, it shouldn't happen that way anymore. And it's, we, we talk to some customers who really want to um, look at controlling some of their budget. 
Now, certainly you can do um, control who sees sensitive information, but we see the most effective organizations providing complete visibility across all teams, across all channels, um, and providing that transparent view, uh, not just for marketing, but for sales organizations to know what you're doing and what's working, what's not, uh, for bus different business units, but also providing uh, finance with the information on how well you're doing according to your plan and according to your budget. So if you look at this really quickly, thinking about um, uh, access control lists and understanding who gets to see what, who's an administrator, who's a viewer, uh, what we find in many of our organizations, the more progressive ones, uh, 80 to 90% of marketers will have access to, uh, to Allocadia. And I think that's a great example of being transparent. Um, many organizations start off with just a small subset of people, but quickly realize that the better you share information with different constituents on what working, what's not, the ability to transfer budget from one program to, to the other, and we all know as marketers that happens all the time where you have a negotiation between uh, the um, a field marketing team who wants to do a major event uh, and a digital marketing team who has their own budget or whatever the scenario is, we need to be able to have a system that can actually manage the transfer across those different departments. You want to be able to ultimately then look at the, what Craig talked about, about being managed, um, being able to take all of those different uh, assets that you have, the different campaigns you have, uh, and provide really a bottoms up design. So be able to enter in all of the different activities uh, that you're going to be doing uh, from the details of a trade show to the uh, spend across digital marketing to the spend uh, aligned to different business units and be able to access um, your actuals by connecting to you know how much did I actually spend uh, what which purchase orders have been paid and which are outstanding um, and thinking about this not just as a uh, as a visualization of how much you plan to spend but actually really tracking the actuals on a day-to-day -day basis so that when you're in that executive meeting and your CMO asks you, how much do we have we spent? How much do we have left? We don't have to go back to a spreadsheet and go back to multiple um, iterations and have that fire drill that every marketer has been in. I know I have, I know my team has, and I'm sure you have, where you're asked for something that's just not at your fingertips. So thinking about your, your bottom up design of your spend, but also the day-to-day -day, um, delivery of marketing budgets. Ultimately, what you want to be able to do is looking at your marketing uh, as not just a series of activities, but uh, how actually marketing drives uh, revenue and investments in one place. So this is an example of an Allocadia dashboard that talks about our revenue plan, um, how much we've won today, how much is left to generate, and where my return on investment is coming from. So I get a quick snapshot aligned to um, things like what uh, what's my ROI by team, what's my um, spend by different objective, uh, and looking at you know things like funnel conversion rates. Being able to quickly slice and dice and say, well, I want to see how I'm um, doing this quarter, last quarter. I want to look at this by marketing objective, all the different things that marketers would want to do. I want to be able to look at my data uh, in, a, in an executive boardroom, in my marketing meeting, uh, in, in uh, whatever scenario you're looking at. You want to be able to see the, the results that you're driving. And, and again, moving from marketing planning to revenue performance. So looking again at what my revenue plan, my forecast, my targets, um, what my forecast and funnel conversion rates are, you know, all of these um, views that you just can't, you simply can't get unless you're looking at marketing as a holistic environment. You need to be able to connect to your marketing automation system, as we talked about earlier, your Salesforce automation system to drive the revenue the spend data coming from your purchase order system, whether it be an SAP or a Reba or um, a spreadsheet, your marketing development funds, data lives everywhere. If you think about marketing and not just as the, the planning, but actually how you're driving revenue performance, I think you'll get a, we'll, we'll see with our customers certainly, a much fuller view of what's happening, what's working, what's not, who is aligning their business, who's being strategic, who's being tactical, and ultimately, you know, where we should spend our, our future marketing dollars. So that's a really quick overview of how Allocadia works with the strategic budgeting framework that Craig talked about, aligning your business uh, to those core objectives, managing 
to spend, managing your budgets, and providing that transparency and visibility into how uh, marketing ultimately wants to be measured, which isn't about leads, it's about revenue. And we think this is a really exciting time for marketers and, and excited to talk to you about it. And so what we want to do is, is let, let's, let's talk further about your initiatives. And so we really want to be able to spend a little time with you uh, talking about your marketing programs, your marketing challenges. Um, we do a weekly demo uh, to, to show you how the system actually works. Uh, but what we find best is let's talk about your business. You know, give us a call. Um, lots of ways to, to, um, to work with us and we can uh, dig deeper into uh, your challenges, what your, uh, how your corporate objectives could be shown and allocated and I'd uh, and lo and love to talk further about that. With that, we're going to wrap up the webinar. Uh, we've answered lots of questions through uh, things like Twitter. We have a whole series of blogs on our website where we've answered more questions talking about the path to performance and how we measure it. And so uh, with that, I think we want to, uh, to wrap it up.